So let's talk about Toyota RAV4 complaints, particularly the 2024 or the newest Toyota RAV4. And you can be assured that if you build it, people are gonna complain about it, and they do, whether it's actually founded or not. So let me preface this by saying I am a Toyota RAV4 owner. We're sitting in a 2024, this is the four cylinder, naturally aspirated uh, XLE trim line. So the number one or a, the first complaint, it's not really number one, they're not really in any order. But number one is it has no power. It's gutless. I don't know what people are talking about. Now, realize it's not a drag car. I mean, you're not gonna jump in it and do zero to 60 in two seconds, you know, like a Tesla or something like that. Maybe you're gonna get a little bit quicker with the hybrid version, of course, but it's still no slouch. You know, I'll tell you today, I was uh, running to the optical place to get new glasses. By the way, shout out to Valley Vista Optical. I had bought some glasses, I didn't like them. They have an exchange policy, and I actually bought two pairs, sunglasses and regular glasses. They accepted them back. I exchanged them out for two different pairs. No questions, pleasant attitude. If you're looking for somewhere to buy glasses, check them out. But anyway, I went there and I forgot to bring my sunglasses, so which were new, and I wanted to exchange those too. So I had to go home, and of course now I'm in a hurry because I'm going back. I'm trying to get this done and out of my hair, what there is there. So I was driving rather spiritedly in the RAV4 and it handled it. It was quick, it was fun, got me where I was going. If you've ever been in a vehicle when you're in a hurry and you're trying to get somewhere quick and it's full of lag and slow and gutless, it's even more frustrating. I was not frustrated in the RAV4, it was perfectly fine. So I don't know where people get the idea that it, it's gutless, that it has no power, but that's simply not true. Number two, it's noisy. Now, on this one, I'm gonna have to agree for a couple of reasons. We're out driving right now, we're gonna get up to 55. I'll be quiet here and let you guys hear what, the, what it sounds like inside. Road noise, that kind of stuff. In a few seconds, we're gonna actually pass over a railroad track and it's also very windy here right now, up to, I think, 40 or 50 mile an hour wind gusts. So we've got everything going with us right now. Here we go. I mean, it's not horrible, but you can definitely hear the road, you can hear the wind, of course you can hear that impact from the railroad tracks. Ah, I would agree though, it is maybe noisier than some other SUVs I've been in. One other thing when, I, when I'm talking about noise, there's a rattle right there beside my ear in this seat belt mechanism. It's just about driving me nuts. I consider that to be a quality problem. You shouldn't have any squeaks or rattles in a brand new vehicle. So that one I think actually is justified. Number three, it's outdated. Yeah, this is another one where I suppose yeah, I might agree to some extent and more in styling than functionality. I mean, we've got a perfectly fine infotainment system in here, you know, Toyota's new floating iPad-like system. Everything in here looks fine, but nothing in here looks in the future, up to date, maybe beyond current stuff. Everything is just common, I think, and that's the way it is. Now, realizing too, it is a RAV4. I don't expect it to be luxurious like a, a Lexus or a Cadillac or something. But nonetheless, there's nothing uh, really differentiating this model year from any of the others. Everything in here looks pretty comparable to what I've seen in the past. So I guess I could agree there that yeah, it, maybe it is outdated, it's time for a refresh, but everything in here is just fine. It's not like we're really lacking anything. Number four, this one's funny. It's too big. It's too big. Well, 
it has grown in size. I mean, if you look back at previous generations or years, generations of the Toyota RAV4, this is the biggest one yet, I believe. And one of the things actually that attracted me to the RAV4 to begin with was its smaller size. This one's not so big that I didn't buy it, of course. I mean, we are sitting in it, right? But it has grown in size, and that seems to be the trend with any vehicle, I, I think. After it's been out for a long time, like the RAV4 has been, it's going to grow in size because the manufacturer, it seems, always does that. They always have to do something to justify getting people out to continue buying the vehicle. And unfortunately, it's size. Now, it's not such a bad thing necessarily because obviously since it is bigger, you can fit more in it. It's more comfortable. You have more elbow room and stuff. I mean, I'm never wanting for space when somebody's sitting over there beside me in the passenger seat. But I really would have loved to have seen the RAV4 in the same dimensions that it was a generation or two or however uh, long ago. I think it was uh, a very good size in the beginning. Lastly, number five, this one's funny. There's no color selection. Well, if you, if you follow Toyota and you know how they are, that one I would say is probably true. When you go to the dealership and you're looking to buy a brand new RAV4 and you want something a little spicier, something a little more eye-catching, you're probably gonna be disappointed because Toyota seems to like black, white, silver, and gray. And of course, the one that we're in right now is magnetic gray metallic, MGM, or just gray. Now, I will say, after I had gone back to the dealer a couple of times after I already purchased this one, I did see a red and a blue RAV4, but those are the first ones that I had seen there in a long time. They are out there. I don't know if it's just people being picky, maybe trying to find something to uh, complain about. I don't know, but uh, there is some truth in it. In that it's not just Toyota. A lot of the other manufacturers like to stay bland as well, and they do that intentionally because they're trying to appeal to all of the people that are interested. And when you start building vehicles in more spicy colors, eh, you tend to lose some of the folks that really aren't interested in eye-catching vehicles. Eh. Anyway, those are just a few of the uh, complaints about the Toyota RAV4. I thought I would address those in a video. One or two of them I guess I might agree with, but overall I think the RAV4 is an awesome mid-size SUV, certainly not small anymore, and definitely worth taking a look at if you're looking for something that's reliable, pretty decent quality, except for that rattle over there. I think the Toyota RAV4 is still relevant and the complaints are just really pretty petty. Leave a comment, let me know if you've got a RAV4 or you've had one in the past, do you agree with that list of complaints or not so much? I'd just be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.